Although there isn't a specific OSHA standard related to patient handling, all employees are protected by the general duty clause. Also, different states have additional legislation related to patient handling. The Association of Occupational Health Professionals in Healthcare, AOHP, collaborated with OSHA to create educational materials on building an effective program. Patient handling doesn't only affect the healthcare worker, it also affects the patient. Proper implementation of a safe patient handling program reduces the risk of a patient falling. It minimizes the risk of injury to workers as well. How should an employer go about developing one of these SPH programs? The first step in creating an SPH program is assessment. Specifically, you ask, is there a problem at the facility? To properly assess this, multiple years of MSD injury data have to be collected by the department. How the injuries occurred and their root causes are also important. Worker compensation costs and employee turnover rates need to be reviewed also. Next, a worksite analysis to evaluate departmental needs, current equipment, and patient needs is conducted. In all high-risk departments, jobs should then be broken down into tasks that identify all hazards and possible solutions. Finally, you conduct a literature review to see what others have done to solve similar problems. The next step is the actual planning process. Once all data has been collected, it's time to brainstorm ideas and options for a program model that will work specifically for your place of employment. Once a model is designed and the equipment needed is selected, it should be brought to administration for approval. When choosing equipment, evaluate all types, including friction reducing devices, sling lifts, repositionable beds, and sit to stand devices. Create a plan on how to share the upcoming changes with patients and their families. Finally, create a plan for investigating when a near miss or injury still does occur. Once the plan is fully approved, it's time to implement it. Equipment needs to be purchased and all staff must be trained on proper usage to prepare for its arrival. There should be a rollout date in place as well. Some employees may at first not be on board because, hey, change is hard. Once properly trained and shown the benefits of the new equipment along with the procedures to follow, over time, they usually will accept the changes taking place. If not, that's a conversation, right? Finally, it's important to evaluate the outcomes and make improvements as needed. Injury data should continue to be monitored as well as how often the new equipment's being used. Patient and employee satisfaction should also be recorded and analyzed. 